<laughs> Look, I'm just recording for my YouTube channel. It's just my regular thing when I'm talking to people from afar. I'm just on camera. You're not. You're just audio. You want me to be on a camera? No, no, not necessary. This okay. is this, this is my, my YouTube channel. It's my archival purposes only, as we say. Okay, cool. Anyway, I'm calling you specifically because of the, the whole. Uh, well, we could talk about even last year how the, the vaccine hit South Africa. You're in Cape Town, and but more specifically, the industry that you were, I guess, I don't know, formally involved in. Are like, you still involved in? <laughs> Does it still exist? You know? Tell me, tell me what's happening with South Africa. It's uh, yeah, yeah. No, we're still we're still operational in tourism. It's uh, it doesn't mean that there's much going on, but we are operational. Let me just find my there we go. We are operational, and actually, we had our first tour in a long time last yeah. week, and we've got yeah. bookings for next month, yeah. and it looks like we've got bookings for December. So it's 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 a trickle, but it's uh, it's something, and it's exciting that things are starting to get back, and everybody is actually really excited as well to start to participate in it again with a deep sense of gratitude that's been amazing to experience as we reconnect with everybody that we've been working with the deep it's it's all i can say is that it's gratitude people are really so happy for the work coming back in some form and mm. very refreshed i think mm. it's a good perspective are the tourists coming back though that's the big question no you know what they are and it's almost actually at this juncture as if it doesn't matter because mm. the perspective change has happened. And that was something that required zero guests. So, oh, what, um, don't, you tell me about that. What, what do you mean by perspective change? <clears throat> um, you know, it's when it's in the absence of something for an extended period of time that you really start to appreciate what it was when you had it. Right. Mm. So it's been 18 months or so now that we have not had visitors, not certainly not at the level that we had them before the pandemic hit. And so it's at that point now where when you have two people in six months, you treat them like they're royalty, which mm. is how it always should be, I suppose. Mm. But it's difficult to treat everybody like royalty when there's a lot of people around. And so I think this is the big perspective. And the kind of sense that I'm getting now is as the trickle starts to come in, Every little bit of that trickle is getting treated like royalty. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's our suppliers. You know, just a simple thing like going to a brewery, a micro brewery, doing beer, mm -hmm. and the way in which they were ready to receive us, the way in which they dealt with the guests. It was as if there was a group of fifty people coming, each dropping one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You know, that's the attitude that people are now bringing to the party, which for me is really exciting. This is so interesting. It means that we are we are we are. We are re-entering the, the tourism space with a very different attitude towards the people that are coming. Listen, you know, um, there, it's there's... a lot less. Not not that we were abrasive before, I think, but obviously it's given a very a very new perspective well, on I, I hate what to it means I, to have these people come. I hate to report this to you, but you know, South Africa uh, has, is famously known for its bad customer service. It was bad service. Oh yeah. So do you no think that, do you think this is a, a, a weeded some of that attitude out? You're saying there is going to be a change. I think so, and I you know I can't say that it's going to be across every level of the space, but I I, I think it's just it's we've been we've been so decimated and, and and you know specifically the space that Coffee Beans operates in, which is it's people oriented and it's it's musicians and it's storytellers and it's brewers and it's winemakers and it's and it's cooks and it's it's street food and you know it's 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 at that level it's not the 3600 thread count per cal sheets you know mm. and even there i think the one and only is hell of grateful for the couple of guests that are coming through now because they're used to very different occupancy levels mm -hmm. so i think it's People are happy to be reconnecting. Maybe that's a kind of a good way to express it. People are very happy to be reconnecting with people from other parts of the world. It feels like that tissue has been lost for such a long time. And now it's like, oh, somebody from California, how can I make the conversation even deeper than before? You know? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something. When this thing first, there were some things that were happening. A lot of people were fixing up their homes and stuff like that. But also it was like a lot of the very people with, with, with some, some means of money 
uh, would take would, would have an opportunity to take a breath and to do some uh, something around their house, something you haven't been done before. I'm asking you all this to say that <clears throat> what happens when okay, let's say you at your high end tour set that goes at the Mount the, the Mount Nelson Hotel. Are those people still the same? You know what I mean? Is that the same kind of capacity there? Did they, they dig it on also? Did the, did the people may, maybe want on a, a lesser tourism kind of thing? Are they did, did they expose in, in what this really? Um, I would say uh, suffer, say, say suffering, but they took the jolt. Is the people sort of like in the middle, the middle tourist kind of thing? You understand what I'm trying to get at? I, I do, and I my, look. My sense is that there were obviously people who were not affected by it as greatly from an economic point of view. But that doesn't mean that people weren't affected because the wealthy, the poor, those in between, everybody lost loved ones. And everybody has been affected in some way. I mean, I think it is like, you know, the pandemic is like a cup of coffee. It's Coffee is something in everybody's home, no matter what economic level, whether you like instant coffee or single origin, organic Arabica. Everybody knows about coffee, shares in coffee. Everybody has shared in this pandemic. Some people have really suffered and some people have suffered a lot less but i think everybody has suffered so i think there is a universal threat and it doesn't mean that people who were assholes before the pandemic are not assholes anymore <laughs> you know I, I i think that the capacity for some form of shift has been radical and i, I would venture to say that everybody's shifted in some way let, um, let me ask you more of a I'll say political thing well what's happening right now for instance, I just found out or just heard that Sir Ramaphosa is, is thinking about having COVID uh, uh, or vaccine passports or something like that. I assume it's to open up business or whatever, like it's always to open up business. But uh, how are people responding to that, the, the, the proposal to have uh, to where you can't go any place unless you have a vaccine passport? I don't know how they're going to do it, but I don't think they can handle the paperwork, but I don't know. What, what have people been saying about that? Have you heard about it? Maybe I should ask you that. Yeah. Look, I mean, we, we could not organize that the taxi industry could switch from cash to cards. Hmm. There's no ways that we're going to have a vaccine passport for every single hmm. South African. Right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it, that's, a, that's a chimera. That, that's, a, that's a distraction. I hmm. think that's a distraction. I mean, hmm. so much about the pandemic is political sleight of hand. Hmm. I think that we already have yellow fever certificates that require that are required in many places. So you can't get into a place if you don't have one. Mm -hmm. I think a COVID, a COVID passport is going to be the same thing. I don't think we're going to have it like what they've been doing in Paris, where if you want to get into a restaurant or a live music gig or you want to get to the bank, that you're going to have to scan a QR code, because that would exclude too many members of the population. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I think we'll have kind of COVID passport light. Mm. Um, but certainly, I think it's impossible in this country to roll it out at the extent of every single citizen from a certain age upward. Yeah, the bureaucracy will being, not will the bureaucracy could not possibly stand that. Just the paperwork alone would be like, oh, no way. This, 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 there's no ways. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I just wanted to get a little glimpse of of how how this thing is affected the tourist. Is it bouncing back? And it's that's a good time to ask those kind of questions. What really spread it on by hearing the way Sir Ramaphosa says was talking, it's like you can tell he wanted the country to open up, up basically back for the business. Let's put it that way. I guess that's what every country wants. Yeah, it is. And um, look, we're at level two now, which does which does help things a little bit. And we need to get to we need to get beyond level whatever whatever what is it level. Level one is, is, the, is the, the easiest, right? Level five is the hardest. Look, I, I, I don't know, Anthony. Um, yeah, we need to open up. And, and I, think, I think what I'm seeing is more and more, uh, it's, it's like when you flew from Cape Town to New York and the fact mm -hmm. that you were an American meant that you could get by with a swab test instead of a PCR test, right? Mm, yeah. Had I gone with you, I would have needed a PCR. And then I've recently discovered that people are getting onto onto airlines and flying to their home countries without any testing at all. And some of these people have been COVID positive. Mm. So I think the way that regulations are applied to international travel seems to be something of a farce. Um, mm. It's, yeah. Well, 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 most... It seems that we should scrap it completely. There should not be any restrictions. Just let people move. Well, I, th I think what's happening is basically uh, people, they, they will let you in the country without this kind of stuff, 
but you know they look so, sort of look the other way. But they have to make uh, make like they have that in place for the rest of the international world to say, oh, is that safe? Is they're doing something like that? You know. But to tell you the truth, in South Africa, when I was there last year, um, it's like everybody gets their hand sanitized. So I I think that that's <laughs> that along with vitamin D, I think will. To <laughs> hold you in good stead. I'm serious. It's Every great, shop you go into, you get your hands sanitized. Exactly. It was amazing to me. I don't get that at all it's here. It's the great state. washing of hands. We are mm-hmm. washing our hands of yeah. this of this pandemic at every doorway. And oh. yet, the washing of hands does not make it go away. Oh, God. So, I, look, I, I have to say that I, I know, I, I comply with all the regulations and I, I've been vaccinated and, and I feel, you know, somewhat at ease. But I, I still think that um, there's so many... There's so many gaps in our understanding, and I think it's particularly from a political point of view. Mm. Um, it, but from what I'm seeing, you know, we we just got to live with this thing as it is, regardless. Mm. Like you can get this thing anywhere; it's all over the place. It's mm. in the air. Mm. It's like the internet, wireless. Mm. I mean, you if you haven't had it, um, you probably didn't even know that you had it. Yeah. Know? All this time, um, for like a year and a half, you had to come across to someplace, you know. And yeah. I've been traveling. I've been moving around a lot, international, <laughs> in the yeah, States. Yeah, exactly. And, and it so was on fun. those airplanes that you traveled on. And it's on the yeah. airplanes that I've been traveling on domestically. Yeah. You know, I think the attempts to con- the attempts in terms of international travel are really, like you say, it's to show that we are attempting to take action because that's what we, that's how the system works. Yeah. You need to show the, there needs to be the appearance of bold action. Yeah. yeah. The fact that bold action is ultimately irrelevant doesn't really matter. <laughs> but it kind of stems panic because yeah. the truth, if people really understood the truth, which is right in front of us all the time, mm. like Edward Snowden would tell us, you know, then, you know, it's too late to panic. Yeah. There's nothing you could do. You just, you just carry on. That's what it is. All right, Ian, look, um, hopefully I can get us. I don't know what's going to happen. I should be there in November, no matter what. I go through this whole thing, go through this thing. I have to go through home affairs, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, you know, you be well, and uh, you know, give everybody hugs and and, and and kisses for me. All right. Cool, cool. That's all, right. all you need. That's it, man. I'll talk to you. Cool. All right. Well, let, like let, let me let me let me.